All right, we're gonna do some Bitcoin short-term predictions. Starting with tomorrow, I'm gonna release this video at around 4 a.m. after I go to sleep. But uh, I'm gonna say that tomorrow, Bitcoin might dump a little bit. Why? Maybe down to 26,000. Why is that? Well, it's because the PPI, or the producer's price index, was a little bit higher than we thought. And the overall price of production of goods was higher. Now, if the overall production of uh, cost of production of goods is higher, then you can probably bet that the cost of the consumer will actually be higher as well. So the PPI is higher, so probably the CPI is going to be higher. So the CPI being higher, people are very, very afraid of interest rate hikes. And because they're deadly terrified of this thing called interest rate hikes, the market will shrink. It won't shrink all that much because I think most of the market has already priced at least one interest rate hike in. They haven't priced in two or three, but one I do believe they have actually priced in. So I don't think it'll be devastating, but I do believe tomorrow we will actually see a... Um, drawback in terms of the price, at least in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I do believe it'll stabilize. If it's worse than 3.7, it'll go down by quite a lot, but I think it's going to be around 3.6, 3.7. So I don't really expect a huge drawback, but maybe around 26,000 at first. Friday is where it gets fun because Friday, there is an ETF that could actually get approved. It's the grayscale one. Now I've explained this before, but since everyone asked me on stream, I'm going to explain this again. The grayscale ETF is different in terms of decision making than the other ETFs. The SEC cannot delay it on Friday. They either have to appeal the decision. Uh, they actually ha they have to find another BS excuse to actually uh, deny the ETF or they can allow the conversion of the Grayscale Bitcoin fund into an ETF. I don't think they'll appeal. And the reason is because they're completely unlikely to win an appeal and it'll just make them look worse. Number two is I think the one they think I think they will do is they're going to find another completely BS decision probably relating to custody to deny the ETF. And number three, they're going to accept the ETF, which is, which is what I hope they will actually do, which I don't think they will do, um, will actually cause Bitcoin to increase. Uh, BlackRock analyst has actually said that a Bitcoin ETF will trigger $150 billion to $200 billion over three years into Bitcoin. Now, that might not seem like a lot over that amount of time, but it is a lot. You can trust me on that one because that's still about $60 billion per year. $60 billion per year, that's like a billion dollars every six days, over $100 million per day net into Bitcoin. Now, that might not seem like a lot um, with respect to the overall Bitcoin volume, but you have to remember, much of that volume is actually wash trading. And this is just an upward effect because those spot ETFs, there's going to be consumer demand for them. And to meet that consumer demand, BlackRock, Fidelity, whatever, they have to buy real ETF, uh, real Bitcoins to actually support that. This is where it's different from the paper ETF where they don't actually have to buy any Bitcoins to actually support it. So because they actually have to buy real, honest to God, Bitcoin to support it, there's going to be up upward pressure on the markets and a lot of upward pressure. $100 million a day, $130, $40 million a day is actually a lot of upward pressure, even for Bitcoin, because that's not that's just not people wash trading it. That's actually buys straight off the market. Now, they probably will buy a lot of it off the OTC market. And that is actually true. But the problem with that is that like eventually OTC is going to dry up. If you buy over $100 million a day, average off the OTC market, that's going to drop the OTC market fairly quickly, or it'll make the price of the OTC market go up, which will eventually make the price of the spot market go up. Remember, the OTC market has to be lower than the spot market for the most part, because if the OTC market is higher than the spot market, people will just buy off the spot market. So like there's that logic going on that will actually increase pressures as soon as the ETF is approved. I'm really hoping it gets approved Friday. I think if it gets approved Friday, we're going to end the month easily over $40,000. But if it doesn't get approved Friday, I mean, I think that's the kind of like thought that it won't get approved Friday. I don't think it'll drop us, but it wouldn't be as good as if we got approved. But the BlackRock analyst did say like, you know, 
in the next three months. So a lot of people are expecting December because January is the deadline for that ARK Invest ETF. And I don't think the SEC will actually deny that one. But there is a somewhat of a chance that we'll get accepted on Friday. So hopefully when I wake up on Friday and I do the stream, I can be like, oh, Bitcoin ETF approved. We're going to 40,000 guys. And I think that would be an awesome end to the week because that would get more people into Bitcoin. But realistically for the end of the week, I do expect, I do expect it to stabilize around $26,500 or around $27,000. I don't really know if the Fed is going to make any kind of speech, but I think everyone is anticipating an ETF in the near future. So I think that anticipation will actually keep Bitcoin prices high, definitely above $25,000 overall. We might have one wick where we drop below $25,000. But generally, we should be well above 25K um, on that note. And I do actually think that being above 25K, I think that'll give people confidence after a while. I do actually think there is more demand uh, to buy than demand to sell right now, especially with the ETF coming up. So I wouldn't be selling out right now. I definitely wouldn't be banking on like any price lower than 20K. I wouldn't even be banking on any price lower than 25K. And I definitely would be um, basically uh, DCA again. I think October is not going to have too much movement. I don't think it's going to be Rextober or October all that much. I think we're going to end like slightly under 30K. Uh, in general, unless we get the ETF approved, then we're going to go way up. Uh, I think November will see slow movement upwards. I think we might end around 35K, 36K. December, hopefully we end around 40K. And as we get into the new year, I think that ETF is going to be approved and we're going to move much, much higher. By the time the halving comes around, I do expect the ETF to be approved and we should be around 50 or 60K by then. Uh, I think it's going to work a lot like the last cycle, except the interest rates are higher, obviously, and which is bad for Bitcoin. But we're also going to have an ETF, which I think will more than offset the interest rates. Plus, I do think next year they'll start bringing down the interest rates, especially in the second half of the year. And by that time, we will have the ETF, we will have the halving, and there'll be more demand going in. And as the interest rates come down, there will be more demand for the Bitcoin ETF as well. So I actually think BlackRock's projections for $150 billion to $200 billion of demand for the ETF might actually be undercutting it because crypto is becoming more and more prevalent, even in mainstream media. You know, I see some Wall Street tickers. I see people talking about it on, Walls, uh, on a CNBC. And I see like crypto aficionados and crypto bros actually making some of these shows. So people are becoming more and more weary of these things as time goes on. You know, we might only have about 8% of the U.S. population in the crypto right now. But, you know, after the next halving, it might be 10 or 12% and it will keep building because crypto is a trillion dollar asset, even in the bear market. So a trillion dollar asset, people and investment companies are going to pay attention to. And I think that's one of the biggest benefits of the ETF. Yes, there is the solid buying of Bitcoin, but with trusted companies like BlackRock, like Fidelity, like ARK Invest, and all these others coming in, there's trusted brand names that people will actually invest with. People might think like, ooh, crypto, like scamish and stuff like that. But once they see BlackRock, Fidelity, ARK Invest, and all this other stuff, they'll be like, hmm, if we invest through them, we will be safe. Because people are always looking for new vehicles of investment, both retail and institutional. And if they feel actually safe with these with new vehicles of investment, they will dip in. So I do actually think the actual adoption of crypto is going to soar in the coming years with institutional products coming in that will represent crypto. And I think people will have a another a different viewpoint of crypto as time goes on. Right now, it's kind of like scam, like, you know, play money, stuff like that. It's not serious. But as it grows bigger and bigger, and as more and more institutions actually adopt, I think people are definitely going to change their opinion on like how good or how viable cryptocurrency is as an investment. And I'm really just waiting, um, you know, like for, you know, 50, you know, 40, 50 percent adoption, just like the stock market. So short term, you know, like short term tomorrow, I'm a little bit bearish. I think end of the week, I'm neutral. End of October, I'm generally bullish. November, I'm even more bullish. December, I'm more bullish. And I'm definitely very, very bullish starting like January of next year um, because we are heading towards that halving. 
and that ETF has a very, very good chance of coming through because I don't think they're going to deny BlackRock Fidelity in all of them. And this court case has them up a creek without a paddle. They have to accept it sooner or later. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.